in previous experiments, we saw how a weak acid reacts with water to form hydronium ions. So let's say we had um, formic acid that was 0.10 molar. We're going to get some hydronium ions and it will be in a one-to-one -one ratio with the common anion formate. We also saw that we could have the same reaction but we could also start with some of the common anion. So this is the common anion formate. It's also known as the conjugate base of formic acid. <clears throat> it is also available. We could add sodium formate and instead of just starting off with the acid and no salt, no conjugate base, we could start off with the acid and have an equilibrium with the conjugate base. So we've already seen that. Well, in this experiment, we're only going to start with the salt which is the conjugate base, which is also known as the common anion. So if we start with sodium formate, what will happen? Obviously the sodium is a spectator ion, but because sodium formate, because formate is the anion of a weak acid, it will react with water a little bit and it will take a hydrogen from the water, just one, and it will form the weak acid, formic acid, plus hydroxide ions. Now this is going to be in small amount, but an equilibrium will be set up. We call this reaction of the salt with water this is called hydrolysis. Hydro meaning water and lysis means to cut or to react with. So water is reacting with the anion. In the case of chloride plus water, we are not going to get HCl because that's a strong acid. So that's not going to happen. That's no reaction. But in the case of a weak acid, if we start with a conjugate base, it will form some hydroxide. So the equilibrium expression, we call it KH for hydrolysis. It's also known as KB because we're forming hydroxide, and it's a very weak base. So the expression is going to be the hydroxide ions times the formic acid that's formed at the same time over the anion of the salt. So in this experiment we measured a 0.10 molar solution of sodium formate with the pH pen, and the pH was 8.01. That's the experimental value. The pOH is going to be 14 minus 8.01, or 5.99.
Now what we want to do is calculate the experimental KH. So um, we're going to um, go ahead and calculate that value because we know the hydroxide and we know the acid and we know the original salt. So here's our equilibrium equation. Again, it doesn't matter if we put hydroxide first or the acid first. So our initial concentration, this comes from the sodium formate, was 0 0.10 molar. The hydroxide, for mathematical purposes, and the formic acid were zero. However, they increased by 10 to the minus 5.99. That's what we're doing with the pOH to get the OH. We've got to be careful not to use the pH here. This is in a one-to-one -one ratio, the acid, so it also goes up the same amount. The formate ion goes down by 10 to the minus 5.99. So 10 to the minus 5.99 with two sig figs, so we have two significant digits after the decimal point with pH and pOH. So we have two significant digits. It's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6. That's how much those went up, and that will be the equilibrium concentration. This is going to be 0 0.10 minus 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6. So if we want to determine KH, which can also be called a KB in this case because we're forming hydroxide ions. We're going to take 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6 squared. That's those values. Again, here is our expression. So these are equal up here. That's why it's squared over 0 0.10 minus 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6. Those are our equilibrium values. And so KH, the hydrolysis equilibrium constant, is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 11. This is the experimental value based on the pH that was measured with our pH pen. So now let's determine the theoretical KH. If it was in the book, what would the book say? How would it come up with this? Well, first of all, hydrolysis constants are not in the textbook. You have to determine it yourself. So let me show you how to do that. We're going to review that Kw is equal to hydroxide times hydronium, which equals 10 to the minus 14. We're going to use that. If you remember, Ka for formic acid is going to be hydronium times our conjugate base all over the original acid. Okay, now if we were to take Kw over Ka, here is what we would end up with. Hydroxide times hydronium. Okay, then our Ka gets flipped over because it's on the bottom. So we're going to put the acid, formic acid, on top. And then on bottom goes hydronium. You can see that's going to get canceled. And our formate ion. 
So if we cancel the hydronium, what we're left with right here, it's very important to see this. What we're left with is our hydrolysis constant. It's the same thing. So how do we determine that? We take KW over KA from the textbook. That's usually in a table somewhere. So that's going to be 10 to the minus 14. That needs to be remembered. In the textbook, the value for Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4th. You can look that up in the appendix of the textbook. Or it, usually on exams it's given. It's also in your notes. So this is what the constant hydrolysis constant equals. 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11. Now just think about this value. 10 to the minus 11 is very, very, very small. So this reaction that we're looking at here, this reaction is not going to occur a lot. We're mostly going to see the left side at equilibrium. So now I want to calculate the theoretical pH. Let's start with the KH from um, using the textbook value and let's see the pH calculated from that. That would be our theoretical value. So now we're going to work backwards. The first time we started with pH and move forward to the hydrolysis constant. This time we're going to start with the book value of the hydrolysis constant we calculated and work backwards to pH. All right, so same concentration. 0, 0. This time, though, we are going to act like we don't know the hydroxide or the acid. So we end up with 0 0.10 minus x. And here we are at equilibrium. Let's go ahead and write the expression again. KH equals KW over KA. We just came up with that, so we're going to use that value. And that is equal to hydroxide times the acid, the weak acid, divided by our salt, the anion of our salt. And let's make sure we write that correctly. OK, so. That's going to be x squared, we're going to use our equilibrium concentrations, over 0 0.10 minus x. And that's going to equal what we already calculated right here, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11. OK, let's work that out algebraically. x squared equals... 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11 x. Let's make that negative. Plus 5.6 times 10 to the minus 12. All right. So x squared plus 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11 x minus 5.6 times 10 to the minus 12 equals 0. There's our quadratic equation. You need to know how to put the quadratic equation into your calculator. So A equals 1. B equals 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11. And C equals negative 5.6 times 10 to the minus 12. Using our calculator, x comes out to be 2.4 times 10 to the minus 6 molar, and that's going to equal 
the concentration of hydroxide. Hydronium is going to equal Kw, 10 to the minus 14, over the hydroxide, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 6. And so our hydronium equals 4.2 times 10 to the minus 9th. So in this case, our pH equals 8.3. 8.3 is somewhat basic, not strongly basic, but it, we do have some consistency. We also see that we are not very uh, significantly basic, which would explain the very, very small equilibrium constant. So let's calculate the percent hydrolysis. The percent hydrolysis is going to equal the concentration of hydroxide that was formed in that original equation. We just calculated it. Divided by the original, okay, the original concentration of our salt. So that's going to uh, times 100. So that's going to equal our x, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 6 molar hydroxide, divided by the original concentration of our salt, times 100. And so it turns out to be, 0.0024%. Very small percent hydrolysis, which would seem to be consistent with a very, very small equilibrium constant.